So it is where many things come to set. Does Manthus wine taste the same? Um, is it me, or are the bags under your eyes even darker than during the last round? Are you alright? Uh, thanks for the concern, Kave. I just... <sighs> haven't been sleeping well lately. Even though I try to fall asleep, I can't get the championship out of my head. And before I know it, it's morning again. <sighs> I know the feeling. That happens to me, too, when I'm agonizing over my blueprints. Do you have any tips for dealing with that? To be honest with you, no. You could say there are many things that don't have a quick fix and can only be endured. Hmm. I suppose you can think of it as something akin to an illness. Sometimes there's no effective cure, so you just have to let things run their course. I don't know what's stressing you out, but I can feel all the anxiety and pressure coming from you. The next round's about to start, so chin up and do your best. Oh, okay. You do your best, too. Looks like everyone's here. I will now explain the second round to you all. There are three leyline disruptors buried in the area around Aru Village. These devices can imitate the effects of ley line disruption and will constantly interfere with the environment. Your goal is to shut them down. The first three who manage to finish this task will be awarded four, three, and two points accordingly. Note that each person may only bring a set amount of food and water with them, and that leaving the designated competition zone will result in disqualification. Well, what do you think? Want to team up again? I shall consider letting you have the points on account of what happened in the previous round. That's all right. I've been here many times, and in any case, machines are one of my specialties. I doubt this will be particularly difficult. It's good to see such confidence in a youngster like yourself. I also happen to be well acquainted with this place. Let's see who will find these devices first. But aside from us, you should remember that there's a favorite for Champion. We must be careful of him. A favorite to win? Who is it? Shh, not so loud. I mean that boy, Tainari. He took first place in the previous round, and if he does so again this time, we may as well declare this competition over. I heard that you solved the Vidya Forest's leyline effluence problem with him not long ago. Since this round involves resolving a machine simulated leyline disruption, it should be a simple matter for him. That's true. It does look like his odds of winning are pretty high. He already has Kale, who is an excellent pupil. If he were to win this round as well, then wouldn't we just be letting him have all the fun? As his senior, it's my solemn duty to prevent such an inequitable arrangement from happening. I'm off. I'll get going as well. See you later. How are you feeling? I think I'm okay, but I'll take things slowly for now. Uh, is this all the water we're getting? Sorry, that's what the rules say. 
while this round seems to be about how quickly you can shut down the devices, it's also testing your ability to survive in tough conditions. Uh, I knew it'd be harder than I had expected. So we'll either need to find the devices as quickly as possible, or we'll have to save our energy and wait for an opportunity. Uh, okay, I'll head out shortly. Thanks a lot, Nilu. You're welcome. Uh, please, take care of yourself. Well, there goes everybody. So, who should we visit this time? Hmm, let Paimon think. Oh, right! Didn't Farozan say that Tainari's the favorite to win? Let's go look for him first! The sun is especially intense today. I hope Tainari will be all right. <sighs> Probably not. I should go check on him. Right. I usually bring lots of water when I go to the desert, precisely to avoid this situation. I went through all my water very quickly, and with the effects of the disturbed ley lines, I started feeling dizzy. My ancestors, the Voluka Shuna, were originally from the desert. But I guess this is what happens when a species migrates. They become intolerant of their original environment. Lesson. Let's get you some water. Humans. Such fragile beings. Your bodies can't even survive extreme changes in the environment. Here, take this. Let him drink it. Are you serious? <sighs> This had better be just normal water. Hey! You're leaving already? <sighs> Paimon really doesn't get that guy. What's he up to? Ugh. Anyway, let's focus on helping Tainari drink some water first. I'm feeling a little better now. <laughs> ah, thanks, you two. Just the two of us, just now! Found you at last. Sino, you're here too! I was concerned, so I came back to check on you. Will you be able to go on? The fur on my tail is so dry, it's practically been singed right off. I don't see any purpose in pushing myself beyond what is reasonable. It appears I'm not suited to this particular round. I should probably just return to Aru Village and rest. Really? So you're backing out? Yes. I do have my results in the first round to serve as a buffer, so even if I forfeit this round, I still have a chance to turn things around later. 
Withdrawing now will allow me to conserve my energy. Continuing to push onward would be counterproductive. A wise decision. Let's get you back to Aru Village. <sighs> it's fine. I can make it back on my own. Oh, stop trying to be so polite. Come on, we'll help you back to Aru Village. Now, Tainari, do you want to rest some more? There's some shade here, so we can stop for a while. Uh, all right, let's do that. Tainari. Uh, and you've got the Traveler in Paimon with you. Oh, hey, Layla! Yeah, the sun was too strong, so I decided to take cover here for a while. What about you? Uh, are you all done already? Unfortunately not. I'm not quite as capable as I thought. I intend to withdraw from this round. Sino and the Traveler are escorting me back to Aru Village. W withdraw Can you even do that? I believe the rules do provide for such a situation. Alhatham did say that the act of leaving the competition grounds would result in disqualification from the round. Didn't I ask you if you were alright before this? If you had just decided to withdraw then, you wouldn't have had to suffer. Well, I had to try, didn't I? So I tried, and it didn't work out. And now I'm backing out while I can. When I get back, I'm definitely going to make a batch of sun-resistant oil. Next time I venture into the desert, I'll be prepared. By the way, you're Layla, aren't you? You don't look very well yourself. Will you be all right? Uh, I did feel a little faint when I first entered the desert, but I feel a lot better after resting here for a while. Be careful not to push yourself too hard. Uh, don't worry. I'm just... Feeling the pressure? Uh-huh. Uh, you can tell? Your expression is similar to the ones I see on criminals' faces when I interrogate them. To tell you the truth, I'm still not sure whether I have what it takes to represent the Ratawahis Darshan in the championship. Most people voted for me because of all the rumors surrounding me, and to be honest, those rumors don't really mean anything. Now I don't know how to deal with all the expectations they've put on me. Even the people who usually criticize me voted for me this time. Uh, so I feel like I have to live up to their expectations somehow. 
So their expectations are putting pressure on you. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I heard that you were voted in as well, Tainari. Uh, how do you deal with it? To be completely honest, I don't really feel any pressure. Firstly, those who expect things from you do not necessarily do so for benign reasons. On the other hand, those who do consider your feelings certainly wouldn't want you to push yourself. Next, we are researchers. Our primary duty is to interact with knowledge, not to meet others' expectations. As for me, I took part in this competition to advertise for an academic lecture at Gendarvaville next month. I'll obviously try my best during the competition, but I won't let any additional pressure get to me. I think you can also try to find a clearly defined goal. That may help you. Huh. I understand. Uh, thanks for your advice. Uh, I'm absolutely parched after talking so much. I've still got some water with me. No, I'll be all right. We aren't far from Aru Village, so I can go the rest of the way myself. You should get back to the competition. Don't you want to win that limited edition card? Yes. All right then. Your spirit will live on through me. Hey, don't talk like that. I'm not dead, Sino. <sighs> Everyone, I'll be heading back now. See you after the round ends. I'll continue searching for the ley line disruptors. Are you feeling better now, Layla? Yeah, I feel like some of the weight has been taken off my shoulders after chatting with Tainari. It's been a long time since I first left my hometown to come to the Academia, and every day here has been so precious. But of course, there have been some rough times. All sorts of complex astrological models, countless quizzes, and essays that took all my brain power to barely finish. Each of those things are like huge boulders barreling at me, forcing me to continue running forward. When I was chosen as my Darshan's representative, it felt like another boulder was added to the ones already rolling behind me. Every time I close my eyes, I think of all the people I'd disappoint if I mess up. Yeah, I think that's what Tainari was trying to tell me. You're our good friends, which is why you didn't stop him from dropping out of this round, and why you don't feel disappointed in me. That's right! No need to feel so down! Uh, that said, he did also say that he hopes I could have more concrete goals for taking part in this competition. Uh, I don't have any now, but I'll give that some thought. Anyway, I won't take up any more of your time. You still have to record the other contestants' progress, don't you? Perhaps they've had some breakthroughs while we've been chatting. True. We should go look for the others. Hmm. Now, who's left? Tainari's dropped out for the round, and we just saw Sino. Uh, you could go see how Madame Farozan's doing. I've heard that she's quite knowledgeable about the desert, so she's probably made some progress by now. Okay, let's go look for Farazan! Don't worry, I'll be fine. We're just in time. I'm about to start digging right here. Oh, you found the Leyline Disruptor already? <laughs> Such a simple problem could never confound me. Not long after entering the desert, I discovered a primal construct that was acting abnormally, so I followed it all the way here. Once I got near here, it suddenly disappeared. 
Something unusual must be happening around this area. You're a true expert, Madame Farwazang. You know what to do right away. Well, I do happen to have more experience than most. But that aside, has anyone completed this challenge yet? Nope, not yet. Well then, I suppose I'll be the first. What about that boy Tainari? Oh? And why's that? He's not used to being out and about in the desert. Huh. I didn't think he would have such a weakness. I suppose he could use a bit more training. What about the others? Is that Ritawahist girl still a bundle of nerves? Tainari gave Layla some advice, and she seems to be doing a lot better now. Sino just started his search for the disruptors, and... As for that guy... Well... Who knows what he's thinking? And what about Kave? Has he found a leyline disruptor yet? Paimon doesn't think so, or our locators would have already let us know. Strange. What's he lollygagging for? With his skills, you should have heard something from him by now. Well, I'm afraid the most thrilling moments are already done here. You should probably go find Kave and see how he's faring now. Come on, stop following me! I already gave you all the food I had on me! You can cry all you want. I don't have any more food. All I have left is a half bottle of water, and I can't possibly give you that. Without water, traveling in the desert will be incredibly difficult, and I still need to find what I'm looking for. Mirak, can you help me out here? Keep them away. What are you up to? <sighs> Just thinking about it makes me upset. Not long after I entered the desert, I was accosted by these fellows. I don't know why, but they didn't leave the competition grounds. And now the ley line disruptions have left them confused and circling around the area. The moment they saw me, they wouldn't leave me alone. They even cheated me out of my limited food supply. Hey, didn't I ask you to keep them away? Kave, is this flying metal thingy yours? <sighs> That's right. This is my toolbox, Mirak. Your toolbox? Huh. It seems pretty fancy. Uh, hey there! Can you understand us? Sometimes I need to carry things when I go out, so it's handy to have a portable toolbox. Well, this definitely doesn't look like an ordinary toolbox, that's for sure. It's a long story. When I was working in the desert, I ran into a merchant group who had a machine core they excavated from some tomb. It was clearly from King Deshret's civilization. His technology still isn't fully understood, and Kasharawar has many different opinions on this topic. Our current theories cannot explain such mysteries. Upon seeing such a rare, complete specimen before me, I forked over all the mora on my person to purchase it. Some time back, I wanted to make an automated case that could store my offloaded items. With that core, I created Mirac. It can't understand commands that are too complex, but it can serve as my assistant and help me with things like mapping and surveying. Most importantly, it can't talk, so it can't give me any attitude. Oh, yes. Uh, thanks for helping hide the fact that I live at Alhatham's place earlier. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> I hope.
hope this season of my life ends soon, so I can get things back on track. Things just started going downhill at some point. Maybe it all started when my mom remarried and left for Fontaine. Or maybe it all started when I spoke to Alhatham in the library. Or maybe it's because constructing the Palace of Alcazarzare burned through my funds. I'm still paying off the debt from that one. Oh, when's this going to end? <sighs> now that I think about it, I guess we're all unlucky here. It's not like any of you asked to be trapped in a ley line disruption. Okay, let me get you all out. Kaveh, aren't you going to look for the ley line disruptors? Yes, but I can't just leave them here, can I? Oh, forget it. The more I think about this, the more I feel a headache coming on. I'll get back to searching once I get them out of here. Time's a-wasting. I'm off. Kaveh looks like he's conflicted. He really wants to win, but he can't ignore those he wants to help. Paimon's always felt like he's the type who easily gets himself into tough spots. Um, Paimon doesn't mean this in an insulting way, but he seems like the kind of guy who'd be really easy to take advantage of. Whoa, someone's done already! Paimon also wants to know. Let's go back and ask Alhatham. Verification complete! Congratulations on being this round's first winner, Sino! Ooh, so Sino is the quickest! I am from Spontamod, after all. We know a lot about ley lines, so finding a disruptor was never going to be particularly difficult for me. Since the Traveler and Paimon also happen to be here, do you have anything you want to say? Anything I want to say? Hmm. My friend couldn't continue on, so failure was never an option. The bonds of yesterday will forge the road to tomorrow. With the ties of friendship that bind us, I won't lose to anyone. That's a line from King of Invocations, one of my favorite works, and it sums up my thoughts right now. It might be a good thing that Tainari isn't here, or else he'd give Sino a good smack right about now. Oh wow, it's already so late. Everyone's probably running low on food and water. It'll only get harder from here on out. Something similar happened in King of Invocations. <sighs> what a classic. Any thoughts on that, Alhatham? <sighs> I have no thoughts regarding King of Invocations. <sighs> Nilo obviously wasn't asking about that. Deserts are much more dangerous at night, so this competition should be nearing its end. At the moment, only Farazan, Layla, and Kave remain. I wonder who the next person to find a disruptor will be. Wait, only three people are left? Tainari forfeited, and Sino's already done. What about Hat Guy? He also forfeited not long ago. at all. But, like Alhatham said, this round's almost over. Let's go see what the other contestants are doing. to me that you guys have had to do a lot of running around this time. Don't you find it tiring? 
Really? Wow. I don't know where you get your strength from. The desert's getting colder now that night's falling, and the wind can really sting your face because of all the sand in it. Uh, has anyone finished this round yet? Sino's already shut one down. Have you made any progress yet? I circled the whole area, but I didn't find anything. But I did have the chance to think some more about that thing that was weighing on my mind, and I realized something. Well, my fellow Ritawahist members must have all put my name forward for different reasons, and maybe a lot of them only picked me because they wanted to watch me make a fool of myself. But be that as it may, I believe that a lot of them genuinely do expect great things from me. And I want to live up to their expectations. Uh, I don't want them to regret putting my name down. Huh? But doesn't thinking like that put a lot of pressure on you? Uh, of course, that comes with some amount of pressure for sure. But now I've thought about it, I don't feel like this is something I have to do. Instead, it's something I want to do. That may not sound like a huge difference to you, but it's helped me relax a lot. <sighs> so don't worry about me. Well, that's great! Also, now that I've relaxed, I'm suddenly really sleepy. Uh, I think I'll just take a quick nap. Just a quick one. <laughs> The competition isn't over yet. Oh, oh, Layla, Layla. She's really a bundle of nerves, isn't she? Wait, you're... Uh, good to see you, too. Ooh, it's nice to be out. Feels like I've been cooped up inside for quite a while. Well, since I'm here, I guess I should help her finish this. What are we supposed to be doing here again? Finding a ley line disruptor, was it? Let me see... Hmm... Looks like she's basically gathered all the information she needs. Ah, oh, it won't take long to wrap this up. Come with me, you two. Do you ever get the feeling that the ley lines have a regular flow? Similar to the way that celestial bodies follow fixed orbits. If we were looking down from on high, I wonder whether we'd find that the ley lines are just the reflections of the stars upon the Earth. Not all astrological phenomena can be directly observed. Some are deductions based on other details that we know. It's the same situation with the ley lines. The parts of them that are hidden underground can be identified via elemental energy, sound, and other phenomena. Plus, now that someone has shut one of the disruptors down, the contrast between before and after can provide me with further information still. Uh, let me see. It should be here, I think. Ah! This should be it, right? I'll turn it off. That should restore the ley lines in the area to normal. Nice work! Again, I didn't do any of the real work. I'm just wrapping up. She'll probably wake up soon. No doubt she'll be a little disoriented at first, but once she's got her bearings, she'll go and report that she shut down this disruptor. <sighs> Will you be staying here for a while? Or are you going to check on the other contestants? Oh, time to check our locator. Whoa! It looks like Kaveh and Farozan are headed towards the same place! Perhaps they're about to find the last disruptor. Also, speaking of Kaveh, he's an interesting one. Huh? Why do you say that? 
Before the second round, he had a chat with the other me. He said that worries can be like illnesses. They don't always have a magic cure. Sometimes you just have to endure them as best you can until they run their course. But the way I see it, his situation is much worse than my other selves. She just hadn't found what she wanted to do at the moment, which is why she felt lost. Kave, meanwhile, knows what he wants to do. He's convinced that he has to win, and yet he still seems conflicted. He doesn't have a second personality, but somehow he still seems that he's at odds with himself in some way. Uh, I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's like he's smiling on the outside, but there's no joy inside, only sorrow. Still, who knows? He must be more experienced than me. Maybe he's just better at dealing with it all than I am. Hmm. Uh, oh, but back to the topic of wrapping up. Shouldn't you be getting back to the action to record how everything plays out? Last one, then the round's over. Oh, true. Okay then, guess we'll be going now. We'll keep everything you said in mind. Kaze and Barozan were super confident at the start, but it turns out they're the last ones to find the disruptor. But between the... Time to go. around here. Finally found it. Kaveh? Are you? Oh, Madam Faruzan. And here I thought you would have finished this round by now. Faruzan! Kaveh! Oh, looks like Layla's already done. I didn't expect that you and I would find a disruptor at the same time. How are the other contestants doing? Tainari and Hat Guy forfeited, while Sino and Layla are already done. You two are the only ones left. Uh, huh? That's weird. Didn't you start digging really early on? Yes, I kept digging, but instead of finding a disruptor, I found a ruin. I fell down pretty deep, and it was completely dark in there. It took me quite some time to unlock the various mechanisms and return to the surface. That's... actually really impressive. Finishing a week's worth of trials in such a short time. <laughs> That's pretty amazing, Madam Farozan. What about you? Why are you so late? I encountered a lot of lost desert foxes along the way, and I brought them to the outskirts of the competition zone. When I came back, I was absolutely parched. And then I blacked out. Probably from the heat, you know? When I woke up, it was already night. I used the last of my strength to come here. A most curious reason indeed. Ah, uh, but are you sure you're all right? It sounds like you were in an incredibly dangerous situation. You said you were familiar with the desert, but the way you handle problems... It does feel rather at odds with your title as a genius. <laughs> it was problematic, but that had nothing to do with me being a genius. It was my decision. The way I did things wasn't optimal, but I wouldn't have been comfortable not doing it either. My conscience would have weighed on me. <laughs> Youths these days. Each stranger than the next. But back to the main issue at hand. Since we are both very certain that this is where the final Leyline Disruptor is, let's dig it up then. Well, this is indeed it. Of that there is no doubt. But how shall we count the score this time? <sighs> what is it, youngster? You seem relieved. 
Oh, nothing. I was just thinking that this round's finally over. There shouldn't be any more innocent creatures getting wrapped up in danger. As for the points, I guess we can draw lots again later. I can't think of anything better. All right. In that case, let's all head back to Aru Village. Paimon thinks you'll both need some water and rest. Looks like the second round is over. I wonder who is faster, Kabe or Madame Farazan? Huh? Where's Madame Farazan? She went to get water. She'll be back shortly. We basically arrived at the same time, so we'd like to draw lots again. <sighs> you get caught up in some things so easily, like drawing lots. I'm not caught up in anything! Don't make it sound like I take pleasure in having bad luck! Really? Then should I say that you have a curious affinity for drawing lots? Um, I'll go get the box and slips of paper for the lots. Please, wait a moment. <laughs> oh Here we go again! Let's see how I fare. I got it! Did you see that? I won! Congratulations! Looks like Kaveh's luck's taking a turn for the better! Oh, finally! After all this time! <gasps> it looks like you've been rewarded for your tribulations in the desert. This round's points are yours. <laughs> and with that, our second round is done. Sino, Layla, and Kaveh are our victorious contestants. As for the current standings, let me see. Sino and Layla both have four points, putting them both in first place. The rest in descending order are Tainari, Farazan, Kaveh, and Hakai. The next round will be the final one. Please rest up before then, everyone. I heard that some stalls at the Wisdom Gala are debuting new games, so feel free to drop by if you're interested. Otherwise, see you next round! this entire time. Traveler, Paimon. I finally found you. Finally? Did something happen? Don't you feel like there's something off about this year's academia extravaganza? When Candace and I were at the cafe earlier, we might have caught sight of some mercs on business. Thing is... They were disguised as tourists here to shop. But no disguise can mask the stench of blood. Just from their suspicious looks, I bet they do dirty work like kidnapping or assassinations. We eavesdropped on them for a while. Their target seems to be someone called Sachin. Sachin? Isn't that the person who Karina mentioned during the opening ceremony? He's apparently the sponsor behind the competition prizes and the diadem of knowledge, but... He hasn't shown himself at all. <sighs> Sounds like a rich person, all right. It makes sense now. The Aramites have been struggling to make ends meet recently, so a lot of groups have been doing private work that involves the rich. In their words, one gig sets you up for half a year. Just one job like this nets them enough mora to take it easy for a while. The extravaganza has brought many tourists to Sumeru City all at once. 
so it's likely that they took advantage of the bustle to sneak in. Dia and I wanted to directly capture them, but they were on guard and made some excuse to slip away. I would have tied them up if it wouldn't have caused a scene. Who's legally supposed to take care of this kind of thing? The Matra or the Corps of Thirty? Mm. If Sino were here, he'd definitely get involved. <gasps> Why don't we head over to the Academia and tell a Matra? Thanks a million, you two. Not at all. It was coincidence on our part as well. Yeah, don't sweat it. The Eremite's reputation is gonna get even worse if these scumbags succeed. Hmm, but this is Sumeru City. Candace and I don't have as much freedom to act here, so we're leaving this in your hands. Should you require our aid, come find us at the cafe. Paimon's noticed that something's bucking you. Is it the extravaganza? Cause Paimon's starting to think that there's more than meets the eye here too. Ugh, wait, thinking like this isn't doing anything. Hmm, let's just go find Amatra. Both? It's been a while. Do you have any issues to report? Someone's planning to kidnap Sachin. Goodness. Though I suppose it's not all that surprising. The growing popularity of the extravaganza has given him quite the reputation boost as its sponsor. He's seen as one of these super rich types. Well, since he's got a target on his back now, shouldn't you send some people to protect him? To tell you the truth, we've thought about doing just that. However, Sachin apparently prefers to spend most of his time out doing field work, and hardly ever comes back to Sumeru City. No one has been able to contact him. Our only lead is something he once said. <clears throat> Each time the Interdarshan Championship is held, I will be watching from close by to choose a suitable person to inherit my estate. Assuming he remains committed to that promise, then he must be right here in the city somewhere. I suspect that the Aramites in question must have heard about that as well, and decided to come here and try their luck. So, they shouldn't know where Sachin is either, right? I would assume not. Anyway, Mahamatra Saino is still on vacation, so I'll handle this. Don't you worry. A couple of kidnappers aren't gonna get very far in Sumeru City these days. I have my ways of forcing them out into the open. All of that said, if you're interested in Sachin's story, why don't you try tracking him down as well? The sooner we ascertain his whereabouts, the quicker we can act to ensure his safety. I mean, you could task all the Matra and the whole Corps of Thirty with someone's protection, but if the client doesn't show themselves, there's nothing we can do to help them. Fair point. Guess we should start searching for him too, but where should we start? None, I'm afraid. He's never committed any crimes or broken academic protocol, so we don't have a very detailed file on him. I've heard that Alhatham has now stepped down from his post as acting Grand Sage and is back to being the scribe again. Maybe it's worth checking to see if he knows anything. Good idea! Okay, we'll head back to the extravaganza venue and see if we can find him. Oh, 
Oh, I see. Sorry, I don't know where he went. He's always the first to leave after the competition ends, and he never tells anyone where he'll be going. Huh. Yeah, actually, that sounds about right for him. Hmm. Let me think. Um... To be honest, he doesn't seem very interested in the extravaganza, so he probably doesn't stick around longer than he has to. To him, being a commentator is just extra work he was roped into. Do you guys know of any places he'd go after work? Oh, maybe. Paimo remembers that his house isn't that far from here, so we might as well check it out. Take it easy. It's you two? Oh, Kame, you're home! Come on in, I'll get the door for you. We didn't hear a peep when we first knocked. We thought no one was home. Well, I can't be too careful. If someone from the Academia came here looking for Alhatham, and I opened the door for them without thinking, before long the whole city would know that I'm living here. You're pretty conscientious about this, huh? So, what happens if someone comes inside looking for him while you're at home? It's fine, as long as I stay in my own room. Anyway, why would someone just barge in here looking for him? Most people have better things to do. Nah, fair enough. So do you know where he is at the moment? What do you think? Who knows what he does in his free time? All that matters to me is that he's out of the house. I wouldn't call it that. He's just incapable of saying anything pleasant at all. I told him how the second round went. I won the lot draw, remember? Because of good karma, of course. My luck's on the rise. But him, being him... Oh, you wouldn't believe what he said after I was done talking! You're always quick to remind me that you're my upperclassman, and yet you do not problem-solve in the manner becoming of an upperclassman. This begs the question of why we attach prestige to seniority at all. What does he mean, manner becoming of an upperclassman? What, am I supposed to earn the title of upperclassman now? And he didn't stop there. He said, I'd encourage you to reflect on why you've ended up having to rely on luck every round. Frankly, it's incomprehensible to me how you've managed to make it to this age without acknowledging the proverbial elephant in the room of your life. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something all Hatham would say. I've had it with him. Every time I talk to him, it's the same way. He finds a way to infuriate me every single time. <sighs> Anyway, the disdain is very much mutual between us, so I'll be moving out as soon as possible. I'm actually packing my things right now. He'll have to get used to doing his own cleaning and tidying from now on. See those perfectly hung paintings on the walls? They're coming with me too. <laughs> if his life wasn't utterly devoid of artistic sensibility already, it certainly will be after today. Wait, you're moving out already? But the competition isn't even over yet! How can you afford it? Well, obviously I can't just yet. I'm just pecking early to get ahead of the game. I've got my new place picked out already. The moment I have my hands on the prize money, I'm going to buy it and move my things right in. It'll take me three days tops to move out of here for good. 
I now know what I have to do to achieve this goal. No matter what happens in the third round, I will win. I will emerge triumphant. You'll see. Well, we'll be rooting for you. But are you sure you'll be all right? Hmm? In what way? Layla said that she thinks you'll get caught up in internal conflict. Meaning what exactly? Oh, don't tell me you think I have serious personality flaws too. Oh, we didn't say that. <laughs> but think about it. You say you want to win, but you also turned Faro's on down when she offered to give you her points. Plus, you took it upon yourself to help those desert foxes. Wait, what's so unusual about all that? I gave you my reasons. I would have felt guilty otherwise. Where's the conflict in that? <sighs> well, when you put it like that... Yes, why indeed? It's a good question. I guess it's just in my nature. Plus, if I just did nothing, then there'd be no escaping the blame if something bad came of it later down the line. But thinking like that all the time must make your life so exhausting. Not to mention that by helping out, you put yourself at risk. Fainting in the middle of the desert, for example. Was that really worth it? It's complicated. I... <sighs> Look, let's maybe leave this conversation for another time. What was it you needed Al Haytham's help with, anyway? Sachin. Huh. He did actually mention a Sachin recently. I remember he brought a few documents home that day. He was thinking out loud as he looked through them, making some notes and doodling as he went. He even suggested that I should take a look, but I didn't. Uh, give me a moment. Let me go find them. Ah, this is the one. Here, take it. Uh, you sure he'd be okay with this? Huh, with taking liberties? He's certainly okay with helping himself to my beer whenever he pleases. And anyway, he did ask me if I wanted to read his notes. I didn't see the point at the time, so he just left them on the side. He doesn't leave documents lying around unless he's okay with other people reading them. It's fine, I promise. Cool, if you say so. Okay, let's see what he's got on Sachin. Serious? All of Sachin's wealth, that's... More than I could spend in a lifetime, surely. Heck, if I got chosen, I'd be able to pay off all my debts, then buy a new place, and still have cash to burn. I could build another palace of Alcazar's array. Except this time, I'd make it ten times bigger. Oh, then there's that new project in Port Ormos, of course. The bridge renovation. To do it properly would take upwards of... Uh, you're right. First, I need to focus on winning and moving out of this place. Huh? Wait a moment. There's a loose slip of paper tucked in between these pages. Did Al Haytham write this? It looks like he was jotting ideas down as he was thinking things over. Hmm. Let's see. Um, two phrases have been circled. Sachin, dead or alive, unknown. And diadem of knowledge. Some of this stuff is just plain incomprehensible. Is this written in some other language? Let me see. Huh. I recognize this script. 
Hmm, give me a second. <clears throat> Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. That's a rough translation, anyway. I can't guarantee it's 100% accurate. Hmm? There's another, smaller line of text underneath. Uh, huh. Why would he bring that up? Wow! It's so cool that you can actually read this script! We worked together on a project once when we were students. The title was Decoding the Runes and Architectural Philosophy of the Ruins of King Deshret's Civilization. I had to familiarize myself a little with this script at the time. Oh, interesting! So, any idea what Alhatham meant by all this? Huh, <laughs> who knows? The way his mind works is one of the great mysteries of the world. Fair enough! Well, guess we've learned all we can here. Yeah, he better catch those crooks. But until then, uh, let's just head out for a stroll. Hmm, little decisions. What could have been going through his mind when he wrote that? <laughs> 